Thank you for tuning in to your very own Tribe Before You Buy channel with your host Karamullah Kadwani. First of all, I would like to thank each and every one of you uh, for ha helping me reach a thousand subscribers. It's a milestone for me. Uh, might not be anything uh, to the uh, people who, are, who have over 100,000 subscribers or 10,000, 20,000 subscribers. I do hope to reach uh, uh, that mark someday uh, in, in my journey. I do this for uh, passion. I'm not on the free bottles brigade. I do not get any free bottles or uh, heavy discounts or uh, otherwise. Uh, we buy all the fragrances with our hard earned money. And so my humble plea to all of you watching is that you subscribe to my channel. Uh, do like, uh, share and subscribe as this helps the algorithm and will help the channel in the long run. So there's no other means of me acquiring these fragrances otherwise that's right in front of you. I'd, I'd like to start by saying that scent of the day which I don't usually discuss but I will from this point on uh, as, as the channel progresses. Uh, I'm, I'm in a learning curve as well and I, I try to uh, communicate with you on a personal level. I'm wearing Po de Espania uh, by the house of Oriza L. Litron and I love this house. It has a heritage, I think it's been there since 17 something and uh, it continues uh, to live its uh, legacy. I have a different setup today. As you can see, uh, there's no rotating platforms and there's no limelight on any single fragrance. Rather, we're going to do a marathon for the house of Amwaj and uh, one of uh, the collections that I have the biggest, uh, I mean the largest number of perfumes from. Uh, my passion for Amwaj started about 10 years ago and the collection that you are currently uh, viewing is uh, over the many years that I've been collecting. Uh, so we will talk about uh, some fragrances new, uh, the exceptional x rays collection, uh, we will also shed light on uh, past discontinued gems from the house of Amwaj and we will start with uh, basically the story. Amwaj is a high perfumery house renowned for creating some of the most finely crafted perfumes in the world. Founded in the Sultanate of Oman in 1983 by the Al-Busseri family to be the gift of kings. The house has redefined the Arabian art of perfumery and garnered a global reputation for bringing innovative modernity and true artistry to all its creations. A matter of fact, the chairman of the board is Sayyid Khaled, who succeeded the founding chairman, his brother Sayyid Badr, in 2003. Masterfully paying tribute to its heritage, Amwaj is a unique fusion of East meets West that defines avant-garde opulence. It expresses the contemporary majesty of Oman, a historic trading center for incense and myrrh, uh, resins that we often talk about and always talk about when we refer to the house of Amwaj around the globe, with arresting and alluring collections that speak to a sophisticated, confident and well-traveled discerning clientele, who seeks something compelling, precious, extraordinary and personal every day. Ambaj perfumes carry a sophisticated signature that attests to unparalleled craftsmanship, quality and creative integrity. Using only the finest and most special ingredients from around the world, Ambaj perfumes are composed of world recognized perfumers in Paris, Grasse, Geneva and New York. Each creation is carefully handmade and tastefully blended to present an enveloping uh, patina and a long-lasting elegant tray. Florals are multifaceted spices and woods, chucks, tapos uh, harmoniously and rare ingredients create intriguing contrasts. An icon in the perfumery world, Amash has built a coveted legacy with a repertoire of over 50 unraveled perfumes, all attesting to a unique vision and quest for quality. Critically acclaimed masterpieces including Gold, Jubilation, Epic, Dia, Reflection and, and so many more. Over the years, these have become iconic classics forever 
soaked into the pages of perfumery art chronicles. Amwaj creations have charmed a global audience and are now available in more than 80 countries around the world. The house's international presence encompasses uh, 12 standalone boutiques as well as highly selective network of approximately 1000 of the world's finest department stores, perfumeries, uh, perfumeries and airports. As an independent company, Amwaj combines utmost attention in detail with an absolute commitment to the highest quality standards. Visitors have the opportunity to, to meet the experience, sorry, visitors have the opportunity to meet the experienced craftsmen and observe the various stages of perfume manufacturing from ingredient maceration to bottling and packaging as well as to learn about the natural materials extraction process at its Muscat based factory and visitors center in Oman. A haven for fragrance and art connoisseurs, the Amwash factory and visitors center immerses its guests in the magical world of luxury perfume making, allowing them to experience firsthand the wide array of Amwash products starting from its exquisite long-lasting perfumes and luxurious bath ranges to its beautifully perfumed range of candles and performs the ambiance. I'm sorry, my French is uh, a little questionable, but I do try to speak a little when required. Arabian perfume culture lies at the heart of Ambaj and it's woven into the very fabric of every creation. Today, the house looks forward with great expectations to build on the legacy of its past in forming a bridge of continuity between what has gone before and that which is to come, without ever forgetting the brand's roots in its home of Oman. A little something uh, that I think is not mentioned um, on the Amwaj page uh, regarding the About Us uh, section. I think uh, needs to be mentioned is that this I think uh, house was created uh, under the vision of uh, His Highness is big in Oman they call uh, the king or the like uh, royal royal uh, um, I don't know how you, you call them sheikhs here yeah, presidents in US uh, the royal family basically so it was Sultan uh, Al Kabus at the time and he wanted to give his people uh, a source of income that did not in any ways depend on um, the oil and gas uh, kind of revenue that a state would otherwise earn. He wanted to diversify, he wanted to give his people uh, a different means uh, if you will, uh, is that if they ever went out of oil and gas, uh, which is uh, natural reserves and can quickly diminish if uh, not kept under checks uh, and and I think he was a visionary at that I mean he, he saw probably 100 200 even a uh, thousand years later uh, it had uh, the state has something to uh, uh, boast about uh, be celebratory about and uh, a, a kind of an income that would last generations uh, for generations to come uh, there is just so much to say about the house of Amwaj and its golden era under the direction of Christopher Chong. I still enjoy Amwaj fragrances and wouldn't say it does, doesn't have the oomph, especially with creations like Silverwood uh, by Cecil Zerokian under Renault Salmon. Let's get straight into the fragrances, starting with one of my uh, top lieutenants, if you will, from the house of Amwaj. Uh, it was uh, the first ever fragrance for the house of Amwaj and that is why it has it enjoys a legendary status and it is available present day for purchase from uh, the Amwaj boutiques and the different uh, retailers uh, they have listed with them uh, so first made in 1983 by Guy Robert uh, it's a classic masterpiece with an air of modernity underrated though may not be the highest seller or the numero uno fragrance anymore but it's a gem and I'm glad we can still purchase it present day as mentioned before. The one I really wanted to get my hands on costs a fortune. 
somewhere in the range of uh, 6,500 to 7,000 dirhams is a 50 ml uh, bottle but the pain they had to go through to recreate them bottles in the shape of the Kanjar called the dagger in English that's reminiscent of the Omani heritage and uh, that's what the fragrance uh, I think the legacy collection uh, would come in so they went through the pain of uh, hunting down uh, the people who, who created these bottles 40 years ago um, and it's, it's, it was difficult and uh, it was a time investing process but they, they accomplished it and it looks uh, it just looks expensive it looks uh, like something that a fragrance connoisseur would definitely love to have in his collection let's just start by saying it's a bit musky, a bit animalic, very floral and green though, spicy and ambery resinous. There's patchouli in here and just smells so, so good. If you'd like to know and get into classics but don't want to get into buying vintage, as uh, the top notes may have turned, if not stored properly, the price tags associated nowadays with buying something vintage, fear not as this one still has uh, this aura of the classics with an air of modernity and can be purchased uh, at the house of my watch boutiques or your trusted retailers I'd recommend Bloomingdale's uh, Galleries Lafayette where I'd usually show, source my fragrances from as I'm watch at the discounters discounters are often fake dupes at uh, ridiculously uh, low prices and like they say, if it's too good to be true, it's probably not. Uh, top notes for this is uh, Rose, Lily of the Valley, Frankincense, Heart Notes as uh, Jasmine, Oris and Myrrh, uh, Base Notes of Ambergris, Civet, Musk, Cedarwood, Sandalwood, Oak Moss and Patchouli. Come 2002, uh, so we'll, we'll come to the next fragrance. Uh, come 2002, saw the release of Silverman. Uh, musky, fruity, floral, freshy with ambers, incense and patchouli. Do not own this one uh, at present and hence uh, can't uh, talk about it much. 2002 also saw the release of Dear Man. I still want this one in my collection. Created by the legendary Jean-Claude Elena. Classy, elegant, super dose with aldehydes reminding you of uh, Chanel number no. 5. Floral, musky, ambery. Uh, woody notes in the dry down. Can't wait to get my hands on this one. Also would love to acquire DR40 from the exceptional extra. It's rather pricey but worth the effort. Created by one of my favorite noses in the business, Bertrand Duchefort. Uh, known for creating uh, fragrances like Zonka for the house of L'Artisan Perfumery. Uh, funny I mentioned that. Uh, not really. Uh, so let's get into why I mentioned Zonka. Uh, well, this has the Bertrand du Chafou signature, if you will, all over it. Uh, this is just elegance at an elevated level. Criminally underrated and perfume less talked or hyped about. It's for someone who's made it in life and therefore does not flex or try too hard. Sits right at the very back, laid back, relaxed, while everyone else is trying to make an impression. Not a beast, uh, not a projector like more popular on watch releases and therefore I think gets a bad rap. Uh, but the long longevity is over the roof. The problem I personally see with this is that it lasts well over 10 to 12 hours but people would usually uh, coin it as uh, it lacks longevity. It does not lack longevity. Yes, projection I might... Uh, it's not a big projector as mentioned, it's not beast mode as most of the perfume reviewers would call it. Uh, the reason for it uh, not being a projector is that it uses a photo realistic picture perfect note of the peony flower. Which you really need to get close to your nose and probably kind of, I don't know how, how, how to put this except for saying that you really need to stuff your nose with this thing to get the slightest hint of the smell uh, of the flower, the peony flower, but it's narcotic like very addictive. And the fragrance acts like that, to say the least. It opens with this cardamom, uh, frankincense, peony, iris, ylang and dries down to a leathery vetiver and I love my leathers. 
one would have to be in your sand bubble, uh, inner circle if I may, close proximity to enjoy this off of you. Uh, go in with the right expectations to really appreciate this one for the true fragrance connoisseur. 2010 saw the release of Memoir Man uh, created by Kareen Winshon Spanner. You'll be seeing her name in many other unwatched fragrances and let's just start by saying that she uses uh, cumin, a spice uh, that has these sweaty, musky, animalic nuances note to the T. With that slight insight, it will be easier for me to communicate all her other creations with a reference point coming back to this point throughout uh, the marathon of fragrances that we will be discussing today. One of my favorite green fragrances, it's like an enchanted forest, it's like entering an enchanted forest. Tarragon, a note I've fallen in love with, Roger Creations, as you won't see tarragon used often in perfumery, a less popular note say for example. Uh, let's start again. Uh, so green tarragon, uh, mint but with that frankincense and lavender absolute. Dries down to this sexy tobacco leather woods mixing in with this extreme green cocktail of absinthe from the wormwood. Tarragon and mint opening. It's very heavy on the leather. Uh, it's, it's very heavy on the leather note, uh, the Amwaj way. I meant to say that Amwaj has a signature way of, much like Roger, if I had to give an example, in using uh, certain notes, uh, especially frankincense, tobacco, florals, not to mention the quality of the materials that they invest in. An ambery oriental dry down, but the green opening though is what's going to get you every time you spray this magic portion. It's a stunner to say the least. Uh, kind of for the more experienced fragrance connoisseur. So at first if you don't understand or, or the fragrance puts you off, keep it aside and keep coming back for more. There'll be a point in time, I promise, that it'll creep into being one of your most prized possessions. Imitation Man, uh, recently done a full review on Imitation Man. Uh, the, the slogan for this is life imitates art. That line though gets to me every time. Please do watch my full review on this one and don't blame me for saying something different as every time I've worn this fragrance, it truly comes off like a different perfume. This is another shocker where it has this dirty iris note. I don't know how I have coined it as a dirty iris note but that's exactly what it is. Couldn't uh, put it any other way but dirty iris earthy, spicy, floral, leather, a theme like with the house of Amwaj leading the threads back to the house every single time you wear one of their masterpieces. Not to mention, they have quite a few. It's supposed uh, to pay homage to Christopher Chong's growing up uh, in New York in the 70s era, uh, the era of sex, drugs and rock and roll. What I associate uh, this with is uh, the time period that, that leads you right back to a single note, that's patchouli, sometimes chocolate cakey, at other times dark, mysterious, earthy, danky like. Uh, like I've mentioned before, it'll take you to a different time and place every time you wear this fragrance. I don't think I've ever said this for any other fragrance except this time. A perfume that reminds me of the same experience I have with Fortnum and Mason the Perfume uh, from Roger Perfums. And another mystery that remains and shall remain unresolved to my nose is they both came out the same year around the same time. That is the only other reference fragrance that has given me this experience though. Getting back to Imitation Men, sometimes it may come off rosy, at other times powdery, uh, and and yet again at other times leathery so the castorium shines through and is unapologetic in this one one of my favorite animalic notes can come off animalic leathery like with the present IFRA regulations though killing all the modern day creations this one is crafted to perfection I just don't understand how they could accomplish this uh, with all the IFRA regulations, it came out in 2018 when every other huge conglo conglomerate 
uh, was doing uh, another Aventus, another blue fragrance, mass pleasing flankers. There was nothing like it at the time until they, the only other uh, or the only uh, two other fragrances that come close are Fortnum and Mason the Parfum or uh, as the much now talked about uh, La, La Douleur Exqui from the House of Lesser Straits from the You Smells Good Eugene channel uh, created with Antoine Lee who we shall talk about some other time in another review inshallah okay we are lagging behind and I haven't covered up much ground so let's try to speed this up do let me know if you're enjoying the insights and details though in the comments below King Blue co-created by Alexis Gurjon and Hamid Mirati Kishani who's, who's been very popular during the recent times it does showcase a very interesting personality to say the least uh, top notes are Mandarin, uh, Blackcurrant and Pink Pepper, hard notes are Frankincense, uh, Amber, uh, base notes are Sandalwood, Patchouli, Oud, Oakwood and Leather. So this opens with a bit of freshness, uh, but the Amwajwe, not going all the way there. It can't be going to freshy by any means. The Blackcurrant uh, along with the Oud note in uh, the base here brings about an animalic burp. Uh, as black currant can come off slightly musky at times. Not the most animalic, but just hiding uh, beneath the uh, uh, beneath surface, like more like in the shadows, bringing in this interest and added adding a layer of this enigmatic mystique to the composition, if I may. If that's your dig, then this one's definitely for you. A true fragrance connoisseur's must have. If you're into niche. Uh, that pushes the envelope uh, with a big heart. It's definitely not just another aquatic or blue fragrance by any means. Frankincense here is more lemony uh, like. Uh, the frankincense can have lemony uh, zesty like uh, nuances and brings about this creaminess and smoky nuances as well. It also adds a layer to the animalics mentioned earlier with green tendencies which come about with the patchouli. The agarwood here uh, used here and with all other unwashed creations is of extremely high quality and the performance longevity sillage is off the roof woody resinous slightly animalic balsamic woody rich slight aromatics counterbalance with the warmer facets that intensify in the dry down a truly unique composition is the least i can say about this fragrance Frankincense being a motif with unwashed fragrances, but the diversity of the signature unwashed like woody notes, the earthy patchouli with the animalics take this in to another direction. Again, one for the true fragrance one sewer. 2007, uh, Jubilation XXV, uh, 25, however you want to call it, by none other than the master perfumer, once again, Bertrand du Chafou. This one, for me, was kind of a late discovery, uh, but remained one of uh, the most talked about masterpieces in the entire Amvaj portfolio, still touted as one of the greatest Amvajs of all time. This was true love at first sniff, kind of fruity, earthiness with the patchouli and spicy. Great creation. What I've fallen in love with is uh, the woody earthiness, spicy like floral, resinous touches. However, word has it uh, that much like other modern day fragrances, this has been watered down. The good part is the smell hasn't changed a bit. In come the exceptional extras and this is uh, the one called the Jubilation 40 celebrating the 40th anniversary for the House of Amwaj. Here the number does not signify the 40 years though. Um, but also refers to the concentration of the perfume oil. Here it is uh, a concentrate of 40%, uh, which is why they refer to all the extracts uh, for the House of Amboj as exceptional extracts. Uh, we did discuss oil concentrations in one of my previous reviews, but just to recap uh, for the benefit of those who missed it, anything over 28 to 30% oil uh, concentration is deemed as an extract. 
I think it's rather 28 percent. Anything over 28 percent is deemed as an extra. Here it's a massive, massive 40 percent. And, and as we go deeper into the other fragrances that we are going to discuss, including uh, not including, but actually talking about the extraits, exceptional extraits, it's crazy because it will go up to 56 percent, like 56 percent of an oil concentrate, which is crazy good for oil sprays like myself. The difference, however, if I wanted to explain to you is the more the concentrate, the more it stays closer to your skin. Uh, and if you were to spray your garments, it would be another story altogether. They therefore sit closer to the skin and are more intense but less ethereal, if that makes sense. They're less volatile and less diffusive uh, than eau de parfum concentration, say for instance. So, on our channel we acquire the X-Trade as well and I usually layer it with Jubilation XXV to get the best of both worlds. Uh, at first I did not really understand the X-Trade as it opens camphoric uh, green light uh, but the more I went back to it the more I fall in love with this composition. 2007 uh, saw Reflection Man uh, by Louis Suizak. I've had uh, people say, uh, call it a hybrid uh, between uh, Jean Paul Vautier's uh, Lamal and uh, Flor Lamal or Flor de Mal. Uh, I can't speak to that as I've never owned any of those. But I can surely tell you that this one's powdery floral composition comes off very classy and profound. Professional. They launched the exceptional X-Trade uh, for this one in 2021 and uh, called it uh, Reflection 45. Of course here the powderness and resinous touches are amplified but counterbalanced with the florals. I do prefer this one more than the regular Reflection for Man. 2008 Lyric Man created by Daniel Vizentin, Vizentin a really fresh, invigorating cold like it has a cooling effect throughout uh, cool uh, jammy rose I'd love to see this one in an exceptional extra soon inshallah rose lime bergamot incense musk angelica smells like a rose popsicle if you will if there's a thing like that or if it makes sense with a tang tangy lime and syrupy jammy rose 2009 it's, it's perfect for summers if I may, it actually opens up in summers much more than uh, colder weather. 2009, Epic Woman created uh, by the trio Cecil Zarokian, Daniel Morel and Angeline Pobu. I hope I pronounced that right. Leporini. Uh, coined as an amber floral spicy fragrance, the exceptional X-ray with the highest concentration as mentioned uh, somewhere above. Uh, as the name suggests, Epic 56 with a 56% oil concentration launched in 2021 and was created by Cecil Zorokian. Another one of my favorite noses in perfumery. It's spicy uh, with the cumin and pink pepper note. There's jasmine, tea, centifolia rose, frankincense, oud, patchouli, sandalwood and amber and sounds like a crazy uh, sandalwood and amber and sounds like a very cozy kind of comforting scent uh, more for the winters uh, I suppose kind of comes off masculine the rose remains in the background but it's an amber spicy bomb here there's so much going on what a true to the word spice bomb but as, as, as said before uh, peppery accentuating uh, the incensey nuances and vice versa so peppery peppers can give you a, a Incense, an incense like uh, facet and incense can act peppery uh, if I may uh, not like a holiday spice fragrance but more like the spice bazaar don't be afraid to try it though if you are a man as Amvaj is known for creating gender bending fragrances 2012 saw the release of interlude man one of the it's, it's, it's coined as the blue beast by uh, created by uh, Pierre Negrin, uh, you'll also hear his name uh, more in in our OVS for this house, as he's created a lot of perfumes for the House of Amwaj. 
I'm sorry. Uh, so 2012 uh, interlude man uh, followed by the X-Trade uh, that was uh, launched in 2020. Uh, the X-Trade comes at a whopping 53% and hence the name interlude 53. Spicy, resinous, dry, ambery. It's Oppoponax, amber, frankincense, oregano, oregano, pimento berry, labdanum, oud, leather, patchouli, and sandalwood. Oregano is a unique addition to this fragrance that brings about the interest to the composition without which it may have been just another release. Extract version is super dense and ultra, ultra luxe. The extract is creamy though as compared to the very dry amber like experience in the EDP. Uh, either way is one of the most successful release uh, in 2012 as well as 2020. 2013 saw the release of Fate Man uh, created by Kareem Vinchon Spanner. Definitely very dry, spicy experience. This one's more like paying homage to the note of cumin which seems to be a star note in this fragrance. If you don't like cumin, this one may not be for you. Having said that, keep trying smelling different things and in the process once your nose gains more experience, uh, it might want to come back to it time and time uh, again. It's a good way of getting around fragrances you initially may not like. It's happened to me many a times. But the compositions that seem to be so challenging and, and the ones that I dislike are a few of the top lieutenants in my humble collection, present day. This one has incense, licorice, uh, immortel, kapahu balm, uh, saffron, wormwood and a host of other spices and resins. It's therefore very unique and may remind you of your grandma's spice cabinet. There is already so much dryness with the incense and the cumin in motel takes the dryness to a whole new level. That's boozy like facet with the licorice note, further accentuated by wormwood as it comes off absinthe like, uh, also adding a layer of sweet spiciness. The dry down is leathery. It is sadly a discontinued gem but shows up sometimes with discounters who really have uh, low stocks lurking around still. A must have in your collection if you like the more challenging compositions. 2014 Journeyman co created by Alberto Morias and Pierre Negrin. This one is a bit unique compared to Interlude Man, spicy, leathery. The tobacco leaf is really intense. Incense, Sichuan pepper, accentuating, accentuating one another, adding a layer of spiciness and a lemony tinge. Juniper berry. Cipriol or Nagamotha, one of my most favorite notes in perfumery. The combination is really great, smells really, really great. A must have in your collection. Please go watch my full review on Journeyman uh, to know more about the perfume. 2015 Sunshine Man, created by Pierre Negrain again. His name pops up quite often and, and will keep popping up uh, as we discuss uh, more creations. Dry. Autumn-like white with the lavender and immortel. In addition, you have the tonka beans, brandy, vanilla, orange, juniper, clary sage with just a hint of sweetness, just the way I like it, not overtly sweet. You may call it so apt as it feels like sunshine in a bottle. Again, a must-own but sadly discontinued. If you can get your hands on this one, it's a true summer jam, uh, one must own. Going from one discontinued gem to another, this one's Bracken Man, co-created by Fabrice Pallegran and uh, Olivier Crest. Aromatic Fougère, uh, more in line uh, with the famous Bois Jour by the house of Tom Ford or Fougère Royale uh, by the house of Ubinant. Uh, but this one is more of a clovey take on uh, Fougère. The cloves are amplified bringing in a warm spicy touch in comparison to the aforementioned fragrances. But really a great offering with patchouli, geranium, lavender, cloves, nutmeg, cedar, musk and cypress. A great fragrance but again sadly discontinued. 2016 saw the release of lilac 
Love, co-created by Nathalie Lorsan and Elise Bernard. Uh, one of my favorite feminine releases. It has this amazing combination of lilac with gourmand touches. Uh, though I've also said I do not like gourmands, but this one is not overtly sweet. Uh, it's rather delicious. And I can totally see Noreen sporting this on special events and uh, date nights with me, of course. Lilac, heliotrope, a fine dusting of cacao, bringing up the sensuality to another level. Vanilla added uh, just the right amount of sweetness to the composition. Or Oris, gardenia, peony again, uh, sandalwood and patchouli. The cacao is rather dry. The wearing experience as mentioned is very sensual and does not go overboard with the sweetness. Super delicious with the heliotrope bringing in those almondy touches and Oris adding a layer of powderiness. 2017, the now going to be or already discontinued uh, herd barter. I heard sources say that Beach Hut Man has been discontinued, created by Elise Bernard. Again, a late discovery for me. It smells unique with the ivy note. You also have mint uh, and galbanum adding to the green mineralic like feel. Uh, not sure, but I think this one's got the X as well, as mentioned before. However, it is still available at reputable retailers, uh, the Amwaj boutiques. It, it's kind of, again, a different take on a fougere. Must try while stocks last. 2019, uh, Portrayal Man, one of my favorites from this house, and this one's created by Pierre Negrin again. Violet Leaf Forward uh, fragrance with whatever juniper berries, there's a spicy leathery edge, uh, though leather is not listed as a note. Light muskiness, mostly seen with the note of cumin, also not uh, mentioned. May remind you of the gasoline like opening. Uh, of the legendary uh, Dior Fahrenheit. Uh, don't know if it still has that uh, gasoline like feel. I'm talking about uh, Dior Fahrenheit because I have not uh, tried it off recently for some time. Don't know if, if, if Dior Fahrenheit still has that gasoline like uh, feel in the newer versions. Do comment and let me know if it's uh, only true for the older bottles or still has those uh, facets. This, however, I think is a rather dry take on Fahrenheit in which this one does not have any sweetness at all. This is a very butch and masculine offering, but a must try. Underrated, I think, deserves more love and attention, which the Fratcom is has been giving it for some time now. Having said that, even Portrayal Woman is not very feminine leaning. Uh, and has a very huge hefty dose of jasmine but the tobacco cuts right through the jasmine uh, making it again quite butch um, wash has this thing where a few fragrances come out in feminine bottles but men like it more and vice versa gender bending sense is what we coin it as nowadays I can't think of lyric woman and jubilation woman uh, being the other two such fragrances that men would like. 2019, Overture Man, once again by Kit Karin, Vinshawn Spanner. A full review already exists on the channel. If you haven't caught it, please go and watch uh, the entire uh, review, the in-depth review, uh, after watching the marathon uh, that we're doing right now. This is Sex in a Bottle. Boozy, sexy, spicy, musky, Slight animalic done just right with a mysterious aloe, uh, kind of like a drawing scent. Kareem also had Fate Man and she is a master at spicy notes, especially cumin. A fuzzy like booziness with the cognac, uh, cumin bringing in the muskiness and sweaty like characteristics, very prominent throughout the fragrance. Uh, recommended that you watch the full review as a uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, concise uh, this one and trying to uh, kind of bring to you as many fragrances as I can in, in a short period of time. 2019 uh, saw the release of Rose Incense by Bruno Jovanovic, uh, which comes in one of these bottles, the Opus Library Collection. A few of the extracts you can see here. Uh, this is Goldman, this is Jubilation XXV, um, that's Lyric Man, uh, Purpose. Uh, journey, 
uh, I think there's Bangla's Imitation Man uh, Memoir. Uh, no, that's Interlude 53 Jubilation something, and I, I can't look beyond. Uh, but so the Opus Library co Collection, the new bottles, uh, is, this is what the new, new bottles would look like. Ruva Jamanovich uh, is also known for having done fragrances for other houses uh, like Frederick Mall. Uh, also one of the greatest offerings, especially if you like incense mixed with vanilla, if I may suggest, is from the Yves Saint Laurent uh, La Vestiaire collection, I suppose they call it, uh, is Baby Cat. Or if you want incense mixed with honey, uh, the honey that you'd find uh, in something like Guerlain, it's heavy, it's intense. Uh, it's intense honey, Not it does not come off, it does not wear in, in like intense, dense, heavy. It's very ethereal, uh, as a matter of fact, but, but the honey is, is so pronounced in uh, the composition uh, mixed with incense. It's from the house of uh, Oman Luxury, and the name of that fragrance is Royal Incense, another Oman-based perfumery uh, brand that's coming up in the recent years. So, if you like Baby Cat or Royal Incense, perhaps this one's just perfect for you here. It's Incense and Rose, a job truly well done. 2021 uh, saw Cecil Zarokian uh, creating a material and, and was released the same year. I love the way she does. Uh, she's done uh, Silver Oud, a perfect animalic with the best use of vanilla. Not to forget Royal Tobacco, two of my most beloved possessions from the half, House of Amwaj, which we shall talk about in a short while. Again, in the Opus Library collection. Uh, material is not in the Opus Library collections, it comes in the normal uh, woman-like bottles. Uh, but I'd, I'd uh, not exactly put a gender to fragrances. Can be worn by both men and women. Very resinous vanilla, ambry, gummy-like, not syrupy and sticky sweet. Lots of resins, tonka beans, benzoin, vanilla, oud, labdanum, patchouli, incense, guy wood, alumi resin and osmanthus. The patchouli brings in the sexiness in this one. A must have and a must try. She's done another animatic like vanilla from the house of Mask Milano, uh, which I shall be getting soon, is uh, called Tango. Uh, as a quick mention, uh, 2023, uh, Quintan Beach, uh, they released Guidance, uh, was created by Quintan, Quintan Beach. Uh, this one really raised up uh, the charts rather quickly and kept selling out when it was initially launched. It is very popular and you already have the extra that intensifies the experience. I think it's called uh, um, Guidance 40 something. I'm, I'm not sure of the concentration though on this one. Features sandalwood, pear, osmanthus, vanilla, saffron, hazelnuts, olibanum, just a hint of rose. Does have the Quintan Beige DNA but not quite all the way. <coughs> you may say it has the texture of Delina uh, by Perfums de Marley, uh, if you've experienced that fragrance. It's creamy, rosy, and in this case, uh, mineralic. Uh, very unique composition, nutty with the hazelnuts and uh, leathery with the saffron. Really, really a great offering. Honor 43 x -ray. A new discovery, I love this one as compared to the regular EDP concentrations for both men and women. It's more creamy and more luxurious with a bed of tropical white flowers. Wearing it in the heat really brings this to life. Reckless Leather, co-created by Alberto Marias and Pia Negrin. They really do good work together. Uh, this one features notes of costas that can come off smelling like a wet dog or a dog's breath. Uh, in extreme cases, if overdosed, frankincense, cypriol, oud, ambroxan, leather, sandalwood, and ambergris. I remember the first, the first time I tried this in one of the boutiques, I was, I was so, how do you say it, I'm not getting the word for it. So the first time I tried it in one of the boutiques though, this one came off, I, I, I couldn't take the smell, I was really, really put off. Uh, present day, I love it. It's one of my favorite perfumes, kind of leathery, amber, uh, if you will. It's an ambroxan bomb with lots of earthiness, oud and woods. 
very 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 Middle Eastern leathery composition with hints of cumin bringing in the sexy spiciness muskiness and a thick dose of animalics done right that's how I love my leathers though uh, speaking of animalic leathers I discussed Alkut just a quick shout out uh, to the animalic uh, more challenging fragrances in my collection uh, and would like to tell you just a tad bit more uh, about it uh, it's actually uh, super rare in which it, it only retails and it's, uh, it's only available uh, to one of the boutiques in Paris and they only make about 50 to 100 bottles annually making this an extra special one and rare to find uh, but if you uh, do give it a go you can thank me later if you love your animalic leathers uh, that's an honorable mention not from the house of Mamwaj Electimus, uh, the bottle of which I showed you had the UAE flag colors like uh, Falcon and then um, the, the three star notes or rather the three notes uh, that it's composed of it does not have fragrance uh, triangle uh, it's, it's just oud, civet and leather uh, believe it or not it's just oud, civet and leather and all the three notes hit you like a train it, it, it completely knocks you over <laughs> uh, Let's get back to the house of my watch. I hope you like the content and uh, this is really draining but totally worth it. Appreciate you guys for subscribing and helping me reach that uh, thousand subscribers mark that actually made this video a reality. I really didn't think it would happen this soon. Having said that, uh, on 5000 we should do a house overview of Chanel uh, less exclusives and upon reaching 10,000 subscribers inshallah someday soon uh, we'll do a subscriber special celebra celebratory episode doing a house overview of Roger so hit the subscribe button like the video click the notifications bell if you haven't already <coughs> let's talk about another Karin Vinshawn Spanner fragrance called Boundless Man amber uh, woody spicy fragrance featuring uh, vanilla blood orange cacao uh, myrrh, tobacco, benzoin, cardamom and ginger again the cumin with its spicy sexy muskiness uh, she does this note to a T as mentioned earlier this does have very juicy like qualities and gourmand like resinous touches so from one tobacco to another this one's by Cecil Zerokin from the house of Amwaj uh, in the Opus Library collection and is none other than Royal Tobacco was a love at first sniff I immediately knew I had to get this one and uh, legend has it, I did. For me, this one has holiday like Christmas vibes with green touches. It should be a spicy, resinous, ambery tobacco. Uh, but when you smell it, there's uh, these green like nuances in here that will definitely remind you of Christmas times. I especially love this one and it takes me back 30 years ago where I'd celebrate Christmas with a very Dear friend, I shall cherish for the rest of my life. Her name was Janice and I really haven't seen her since or heard of her. Her mother used to call me the son of Jesus, Nazarillah. But very fond memories. I used to have long hair, I never used to shave, I always used to have a kind of a beard. She was a single mother and worked really hard to provide for Janice. She babysit kids all day and I never saw her complain no matter how, how much pain she was going through she was a true warrior let's get back uh, to the not so quick overview it's cardamom, licorice, anise, basil, frankincense and lots of other ambery and resinous notes with leathery touches but I think it's uh, the licorice, anise and fenugreek that may transport you to Christmas holidays the note of tobacco does also take me back as I used to be a raw heavy heavy chain smoker we used to do about 60 sticks a day and we used to smoke Marlboro Reds that cowboy thing yeah the masculine <coughs> ah, so tobacco has always been a big part of uh, my life be it celebrations and heartbreaks throughout a must have uh, I have done a full review on Raul Tobacco as well. I urge you to go watch it after you've finished, after you're done with this one. Uh, 
Wood Symphony, created by Jacques Cavalier, the in-house perfumer at Louis Vuitton. This is just so gorgeous. Out of a bottle, it may not smell very inspirational, i.e. on a test strip or otherwise, but on skin is where the magic happens and the composition comes alive. This is uh, Orish Absolute, Orish Concrete, Rum, Jasmine, Rose, Civet, Dry Woods with a bit of sweaty animalic thing going on here. Can you guess what this may be associated to with all the talks that we've been doing so far? Spicy, animalic like muskiness. You're right. I suspect human uh, being the culprit as with many other Amarch compositions but it's not mentioned as no. In the end, uh, it's a powdery, boozy, animalic, woodsy beauty. Even with the animalics like facets, you're bound to fall in love with this one. Remember though to try it on skin. After all, that's the final note in perfumery. 2023 Search created by Alexis Gurjan once again. So this one has notes of cake, juniper, lemon, lime, mandarin, oranges. Though I do not associate citruses with the house of Manwaj very often. Exception being Silverman, which we discussed towards the beginning, uh, which has now been discontinued for the longest time ever. Vetiver, Gaia Kur, Omani, Green. Uh, there was this one time that I actually uh, sprayed an incense fragrance for my wife. And she turned around and she said, hmm, it's spicy fragrance. So yes, she correlated, her brain worked out in a way, she has a good nose uh, at that. And she took less than a second to come back saying it, it was kind of spicy. Uh, was a spicy fragrance. Uh, pepper accentuates the uh, incense and vice versa as we mentioned before. The LME resins brings a hint of sm smokiness accentuated by the note of vetiver. Doubling up on everything, what you're getting here is a very bright airy citrus top with dense smoky woods. Uh, contrast is very important to bring interest into a composition and this one does just that. A bit simplistic but I use it to layer with other unwashed fragrances and it pays seamlessly. The care and juniper bring in these metallic touches. I remember, <coughs> I'm sorry, I have this um, hyper allergies from spraying all the fragrances. So I do apologize that we won't be spraying any of the fragrances today as I'm already um, under the under the hyper allergic phase and I started taking my cortisones again. Uh, but as, as I was mentioning, so I, there, there was a time when I I layered about four fragrances from the House of Amwaj, including this one. Uh, I did, um, if I remember correctly, I sprayed uh, Search, Purpose, uh, King Blue, uh, and maybe Jubilation or Reflection, one of those. And it smelled super sexy and unique. It was just uh, over the top, but that's how I like my fragrances, right? Uh, Though I've coined it simplistic, do not be deceived as it's not a typical straightforward citrus fragrance. It does have a lot of depth with the woods and smokiness from the resins and the addition of black pepper which can extend and accentuate the incense. It comes off more like incense infused with citruses and is quite long lasting. It is uh, full of contra contrast yet remains balanced. Let's quickly discuss Lineage uh, by uh, Karine Winstrom Spanner. Features notes of frankincense, vetiver, patchouli, myrrh, benzoin, labdanum, fenugreek, per Peruvian uh, pepper tree, Sichuan pepper, saffron, and ginger. A uh, very spiritual like fragrance with lots of resins and smoky, incense vibes, and has ambery touches. The spices blend in well with the frankincense, and it's quite interesting may definitely remind you of church and I can vouch for that as my elder brother uh, studied in St. Mary's Catholic High School uh, here in the UAE and I ha I'd have the opportunity to often go light a candle, bow down, make a prayer in front of Mount Mary and do remember what the church would smell like back in the day. Purpose Man uh, by Quentin Bish. Purpose has notes of saffron, suede, akigala wood. Uh, note that is uh, propriety. It's a propriety ingredient. Um, I think it's IFF. I'm not sure. Please do not quote me on this. I'm, I'm not sure what uh, how this is propriety to. 
uh, I, I suppose uh, one of those flavoring uh, ingredient houses. It's odor profile, a synthetic molecule uh, reminiscent of patchouli with a hint of pepper and fine agarwood. Uh, the notes continue uh, in this fragrance and uh, they include mystical, uh, rose, vetiver, uh, sandalwood, papyrus, bergamot, pimento, pink, be pink, pink pepper and uh, frank frankincense if I have not already mentioned that and I so wanted this fragrance as that mystical really piqued my interest. May come off metallic, uh, very rosy, patchouli, leathery and spicy from the use of saffron. It's rather complex unlike search, uh, you can tell there's a lot going on here. Not very warm though, even with the ambers coming through, uh, there is a peppery vibe to it. Something comes off uh, very crisp and metallic. Uh, you may be put off by it, but don't dismiss it, dismiss it just as yet. The spicy facets here are competing with the incense and the incense may remind you of church. This is an exact reverse of lineage where you have more incense, less spiciness. <coughs> Here it is, the spices competing with the incense and there's definitely rose but the saffron uh, battling with the rose for supremacy. Silver Oud uh, by Cecil Zorokian and then we shall wind this up, inshallah. Uh, thank you all for staying till the end and like they always say, save the best for the last. Uh, my most favorite perfume from the house of uh, Amwaj since uh, Reno Salmon has taken the reins um, as the creative director. It is quite on the daring, uh, challenging uh, side uh, and it's an out there in your face wood composition like no other. Speaking of Nagar Motha, this one's a Cipriol bomb and opens with a hefty dose of Cipriol wood and animalic castorium, unapologetic, totally bash, uh, totally bashes your senses, yet elegant and uber luxe. So it has my favorite uh, note, patchouli, virgin cedarwood, Assam wood, uh, being one of my other favorite notes, also used by Jacques Cavalier uh, for the house of uh, Louis Vuitton. Uh, the name of that fragrance, uh, Pure Oud, it retails for about seven, over 7,000 dirhams. <laughs> My most per favorite perfume, it has this chocolate like barnyard, poopy, animalic like nuances that may remind you of the horse tables. Getting back to the notes for this one, you have bourbon, vanilla, absolute, giving it just a hint of sweetness, not going overboard with the sweetness as I despise sweet fragrances. Can give you an example, I really don't like Naxos. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I just can't handle the sweetness. It's a high beast and a much loved and talked about uh, fragrance. It's a Fracom's Darling from the house of Zerjov, but I could never get around it. Uh, for Silver Wood though, it's that smoky birch and castorium that I truly consider notes that truly shine through and through. I love animalics and this one's backup bottle worthy, uh, for sure. That brings us to the end of this celebratory video and I shall now uh, let you know the rankings for the different categories I have created. First, first of all, I'll tell you the different categories that I've created and I, I shall give you my ranking on those. I love my animalics and this one's backup one. <coughs> <coughs> so the categories I've divided this, I, I suppose I divided this in is uh, the regular um, Oda Parfums EDPs for men, uh, the Opus Library Collection and the Extras. Uh, and let's just say, start by saying that from the Extras, uh, I do love Reflection 45 but if I was to choose uh, Okay, Reflection 45 it is, although I love Jubilation uh, 40 as well, uh, Interlude is a blue beast, it is, uh, and the extra it's totally exceptional, it's intense, it's, it's dense, but I'll go for Reflection 45 from uh, the extra it's, um, in, in the Opus Library collection, I do love Silver Wood, though Silver Wood and Royal Tobacco would probably compete uh, head to head, uh, if I was to kind of 
really narrow down on the top two, Silverwood and Royal Tobacco. Uh, from the Udapa Farm Man's Bottles, my top two lieutenants would be Gold and uh, Gold Man, obviously, and uh, Jubilation XXV. But again, if I was to narrow it down, Gold Man would be number two, and uh, Jubilation uh, XXV would be number one. So let's say Jubilation XXV, my hot favorite, number one. Uh, followed very closely by Silver Oud and uh, followed by Reflection 45. So those are my top three lieutenants that I'd recommend uh, you try and if you like them by all means uh, acquire these fragrances. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, do let me know your thoughts. Also let me know if you already have these uh, gems or if you have uh, different perfumes from the house of Home Watch uh, and which ones are your favorite compositions. Uh, <clears throat> or at least if this review helps you make a, a, a conscious decision as to which ones you'd like to try and maybe which ones you'd like to go for. Do share your experiences and don't forget to comment. Feel free to ask me any question and I'll try to answer them to the best of my capability. Until the next time, your host Karmala Kadwani signing out.